Welcome back to Legion Builds, where I show you how to bring your favorite fictional characters into games of Dungeons & Dragons. If you like this build, please like and subscribe to not miss a single build each week on YouTube, Spotify, and other major podcasting platforms. Today we are building Galen Merrick, aka Star Killer. Galen was introduced in Star Wars Force Unleashed, one of the greatest Star Wars titles, as Vader's secret apprentice. Trained in the ways of the dark side, Galen Galen is a monster in combat and completely relentless in completing his mission. Our goals today will be to unleash the power of the dark side, which means enough lightning to power Cincinnati. Next, we need the power to throw, or in some cases, launch objects. And by objects, I mean yourself or whomever makes you angry. Finally, we need to unleash savage combat. So let's get started. We'll be using standard point array, roll for stats if you wish, but keep multi-classing minimums in mind. Dex will be first at 15. You're incredibly agile, fast, and pretty hard to hit. Crisbo will be next at 14 as you are scary. Khan is next at 13. You have spent your whole life training to be a perfect soldier, so you're in damn good shape. Intelligence will be at 12 as your force abilities are mind powers and you need to understand how to use them. Wisdom is low with a 10. Your senses are highly attuned, but you have anger issues and failed some pretty big insight checks. Finally, we're dumping strength because it's not important for this build, even though I do believe you could probably knock someone out. Galen is a human, because there can't be a Star Wars story where the main character isn't a human. But he's a special human, so we'll go with variant human. Add plus one into dex and intelligence. For your feat, telekinesis adds plus one to intelligence and gives you the mage hand cantrip. Mage hand allows you to move and interact with objects within 30 feet of a spectral hand, but this feat makes the hand invisible and requires no verbal or somatic components, which means you just move things with your mind. This feat also allows you as a bonus action to shove one creature you see within 30 feet of you. The creature must make a strength saving throw or be pushed five feet away from you. For your skill, take intimidation. For background, we need to take stealth and perception. As you were born with your abilities, we're going to start things off with Sorcerer. Choose the skills Deception and Persuasion. Level 1 Sorcerers receive a Sorceress Origin. Storm Sorcery unleashes the raw power of Elemental Air. When Speaker gives you Primordial as a language proficiency. Temptisus Magic lets you, as a bonus action, grant yourself a flying speed of 10 feet before or after you cast a spell of first level or higher. You're also a spell caster. For spells, Friends lets you mind trick weaker wills. For one minute, you have advantage on all charisma checks directed at one creature that isn't hostile towards you. After the spell ends, they will realize you're played with their minds. Lightning Lure lets you lash out with lightning and grab an enemy within 15 feet. On a failed strength save, they are pulled 10 feet towards you, and if they get within 5 feet of you, they take 1d8 lightning damage. This will eventually be upgraded to 4d8s. Shocking Grasp lets you electrocute someone you can touch. Making a melee spell attack, the target takes 1d8 lightning damage and can't take reactions till the start of their next turn. This attack has advantage if they're wearing metal, and you will eventually be upgrading this to 4d8 lightning damage. Thunderclap releases a shockwave from you, hitting every everyone next to you and forcing a con save. On a failure, they take 1d6 thunder damage, and like Shocking Grasp and Lightning Lure, this will upgrade to 4d6 thunder damage over time. Jump triples your jump distance for one minute. Feather Fall stops all fall damage no matter the height on up to five creatures. Time for some fighting skills. We're going to jump over to Fighter. Level 1 fighters get a fighting style. Dueling adds plus 2 to the damage when wielding a single weapon in one hand and holding no other weapon weapon. Second Wind lets you heal 1d8 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once between short or long rests. Level 2 fighters gain action surge. You can now, once per short or long rest, gain a free action. Level 3 fighters receive their subclass. Psy Warriors improve their attacks and movement with telekinetic energy. Psionic Power grants you psionic energy dice. These are dice you use for several different abilities. You receive dice equal to 2 times your proficiency bonus, and these are d6s. Protective Field lets you reduce damage when you or another creature within 30 feet takes a hit. As a reaction, you roll one psionic dice and add your intelligence modifier, reducing the damage by that number. Psionic Strike increases your weapon's attack damage by adding 
the psionic dice, plus your intelligence modifier. You can even use this with a ranged weapon attack as long as the target is within 30 feet of you. Telekinetic movement lets you move one object or a willing creature up to 30 feet, or grab a tiny object and bring it to your hand. You can do this once per short or long rest, or by expanding a psionic dice. Okay, so we need to cover something real quick. In the game, Galen is able to throw his lightsaber and then call it back. Now, you don't really want to do this with your weapon because throwing a weapon that does not have the thrown property reduces its damage. Now, with Psionic Strike, you'll be able to add a D6 plus your Intelligence modifier to that 1D4 damage. Then, you can use Telekinetic Movement to bring it back to you. But I would suggest just not doing that whatsoever. It's not really tactical. Level 4 fighters receive their first ability score improvement. Place this into Charisma for better spell DC and better spell attack bonus. Level 5 fighters gain extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single action. Combining this with Action Surge, you can attack up to four times. Your psionic dice are now also a D8. So, you know what? Throwing the sword's getting a little bit better, but still, I would not suggest it. Level 2 sorcerers gain Font of Magic. This grants you special sorcery points that you can use a number of ways. Right now, you can only use this to gain spell slots by burning points, or gain points by burning spell slots. For your new spell, Shield adds plus 5 to your AC as a reaction and automatically stops magic missile. Level 3 sorcerers receive Meta Magic. You can now use your sorcery points to change your spells. Distant spell lets you double the range of a spell if it has a range of 5 feet or greater, or it turns a touch spell into a 30 foot range spell. This means Shocking Grasp can now be at 30 feet instead of people next to you. Subtle spell lets you cast spells without verbal or somatic components. You also gain second level spell slots. Gust of Wind releases a blast of wind in a line that is 60 feet long and 10 feet wide for up to one minute while you maintain concentration. Each creature in the line must make a strength save or be pushed 15 feet away. Any creature trying to move against the line must spend two feet of movement for every foot. As a bonus action, you can change the direction of the line. Level 4 Sorcerers gain another ability score improvement. Place this into Intelligence to raise your psionic capabilities. For your new spells, Thunder Wave releases a stronger shock wave from you hitting everyone within 15 feet. Everyone who is hit must make a con save or take 2d8 thunder damage and be pushed back 10 feet. Sword Burst attacks everyone within 5 feet of you, forcing a dex save and dealing 1d6 force damage. This will eventually be upgraded to 4d6 damage. Now may I suggest this being like force lightning coming out of you and just hitting everyone next to you, I think that would be cool. Level 6 fighters receive another ability score improvement, let's place this into dex. Level 7 Psy Warrior Fighters receive Telekinetic Adept, granting new abilities. Psionic Powered Leap lets you, as a bonus action, grant yourself a flying speed equal to twice your walking speed, once per short or long rest, or by using a psionic dice. Telekinetic Thrust pushes a target you hit with an extra psionic damage up to 10 feet should they fail a strength save. Level 8 Fighters receive another ability score improvement. Let's cap off Charisma. Level 5 Sorcerers gain Magical Guidance. When you make a skill check and fail, you can spend 3 Sorcery Points to re-roll it. You also receive 3rd level Spell Slots. Lightning Bolt launches lightning from you in a 100 foot long, 5 foot wide line. Every creature inside the line must make a dex save or take 8d6 lightning damage. Level 6 Storm Sorcerers gain Heart of the Storm. You now have resistance to lightning and thunder damage. Also now, when you cast a spell of first level or higher that deals lightning or thunder damage, creatures of your choice within 10 feet take lightning or thunder damage equal to half your sorcery level. Storm Guide lets you control the weather around you. If it is raining, you can use a bonus action to create a 20 foot radius sphere around you, stopping the rain. This effect stays up till you end it. If it is windy, you can use your bonus action to create a 100 foot radius sphere around you and control the direction of the wind until your next turn. For your new spell, Haste lets you choose one creature within 30 feet, including yourself. The creature now has double speed, plus two AC, 
Lucy has advantage on deck saves and gains a free action. This action does not benefit from extra attack and cannot be used to cast spells. When the spell ends, the creature is so tired they can't move or use an action till their next turn. Level 7 Sorcerers gain 4th level spell slots. For your new spell, Hold Person lets you hold a person within 60 feet and paralyze them should they fail a wisdom save. They can repeat the save at the end of each of their turns. Level 8 Sorcerers get our final ability score improvement. Time to cap off decks. For spells, Shatter releases a shockwave within 60 feet of you. The shockwave is a 10 foot radius sphere and forces everyone within the sphere to make a con save. On a failure, they take 3d8 thunder damage. Creatures made of inorganic material take this save at disadvantage and non-magical objects also take damage. Level 9 fighters receive Indomitable. You can now re-roll a fail save once per long rest and this includes death saves. Level 10 Psy Warrior fighters gain Guarded Mind. You now have resistance to psychic damage and can spend a psionic dice to end the effects of Charmed or Frightened on yourself. Level 9 sorcerers gain 5th level spell slots. 4 spells, Telekinesis grants you the ability to grab and hold anything within 60 feet for 10 minutes. If the target is a creature, you must make a check using your spellcasting modifier versus their strength, or they become restrained and can now be moved in any direction. Every turn, you can maintain the grip by forcing the check again. If it is an object, it can weigh up to 1,000 pounds, and if the object is being held, you can make a check similar to the gripping check to take it from its holder. Our final level is level 11 fighters and you gain another extra attack, bringing your total to 3 attacks per action, 6 attacks with an action surge, and your psionic dice are now 1d10. Okay, at this point even I'm thinking about throwing the sword and just calling it back. Time to dive in and look at this build. You are terrifying. With 3 attacks or 6 with an action surge, you can add effects to the attack such as damage or even push the target. You can increase your AC or reduce damage. You're also resistant to psychic, thunder, and lightning damage. You can double your spell ranges, cast them in silence, or even restrain, and deal damage to another creature within 10 feet of you if you deal lightning damage. Your movement is also great. You can jump 24 feet, propel yourself up to 60 feet, through the air, fall from any height, and take no damage. Finally, you can move stuff with your mind, objects, creatures, you can even paralyze them with your mind. Downside, you are dealing no magical damage with your melee attacks, so getting past resistances is completely relying on your spells, and higher level creatures will be bringing legendary resistances in case they fail the saves. Your health is only around 120 as well, which isn't bad, but it's really not great either, is it? This build is, pardon the pun, a shock troop build. You hit fast and hard, leaving destruction in your wake. Get in, get out before your enemies can rally against you and overpower you. Thank you for joining me again. Make sure to subscribe to the channels. We release new builds every week. And if you like this build, check out our other characters like Mortal Kombat, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, or Noob Cybot. Or how about horror characters like Michael Myers, Nemesis, or Freddy Krueger. Don't forget to check out our Patreon to help us decide which builds are next.